Good morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Stephen Brooks. Welcome today to Morning Glory, our midweek Bible study. And I'm so glad that you are here today. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to begin today in Hebrews chapter... Let's see here. What do we have? Um, Hebrews chapter 11. Praise God. I've got a couple of different uh, Hebrews verses here to look at. But let's start today in verse 33. And let's begin with prayer. Father, as we jump into your word, we ask for your Holy Spirit to really flow and help us to get the word in. Help us by the Spirit to receive it, understand it, and get it into our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, we pray also for the nation of Israel, safety and protection over all of the idea of soldiers. Father, we pray for the soul, the emotional stability of the Israeli people, that you will stabilize them during this time and let there be a national cohesion of unity and love that rises up. Thank you, Father. Fight their enemies, Father God. Fight their enemies. Thank you, Father God. Let your angels be with the IDF as they go in. Father, bless the Jewish people. Bless the nation of Israel. And Father, we thank you. We cover the nation of Israel with our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. My friends, I could say a lot more about what's going on with Israel, but I think the bottom denominator is just pray. Continue to pray. And if you don't really know what to pray, just pray in the Holy Spirit uh, with your mind focused on God, uh, helping them through this uh, great time. My wife and I are privileged to have a very special contact in Israel that uh, knows things way up in the military. And, uh, and I think the best thing I could just say is pray. Praise the Lord. Pray. Praise God. You know, let me say a little thank you to all of our partners, online church members that contributed in a special way. Remember when I went to Israel a few months ago, and many of you contributed to help us feed the lone wolves, the Golani Brigade, stationed in uh, the Golan Heights of northern Israel. Well, many of those young men, they... Uh, uh, their lives have ended. And, you know, it's heartbreaking. I've got all of their pictures on my phone, and uh, it's just absolutely incredible. So I want to say thank you, because some of you gave to that meal, and you gave them one of the finest barbecues they've ever had. And that was probably the finest barbecue meal, and maybe best meal, they probably have had in a few years. And they were very grateful, thanking uh, Pastor Kelly and I, and thanking our ministry partners for allowing them to have that privilege. And who would have known that within just a few months, many of them, including the leader, would not be alive anymore. So they they felt the Christian love, and I believe they're in the hands of God. You know, Jesus appears to so many of the Jewish people uh, often just before their life ends and says, I am the true Messiah. You want to go to heaven with me? And of course, they say yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different theology class, but uh, that has been proven many, many times over. Praise God. So thank you for your prayers. Let's continue to lift up the nation of Israel, a very, very tough time uh, for them. You know, um, years back, my wife and I were in the Golan Heights, uh, which is the northern strategic defense point because you have Syria right across the border. And when you had the uh, Yom Kippur War decades back, one of the generals uh, was there, you know, this is before the, the war started, and he was relieving himself. This is an IDF general. He was relieving himself using the bathroom. He actually had pulled his pants down and was, and was squatting because, you know, there's not much out there at that time especially. And he had his pants pulled down, and he was using the restroom. And when he we was at that exact moment is when Syria launched the attack, and it was the Arab coalition trying to wipe out and destroy Israel. And that man, that general said that while he was using the restroom, squatting down, he looked up as the Syrian fighter jet came in with all of the other fighter jets. And he made literal eye-to-eye -eye contact with that pilot as they're coming in to drop bombs on the Israeli people. And, the, you know, that fighter jet guy grimaced and as they flew in. And the general said, they have literally caught us with their pants down. Well, it happened again. 
But my friends, let's pray for Israel because God's going to visit the Jewish people. Let's continue to pray for them. And thank you for your prayers. It does make an eternal difference. Woo! Glory to God. Now, I want to share a message today called Faith as a Divine Mystery. And with all of the crazy stuff in the world today, you need to have your faith. I'm talking strong. Praise God. And I think this message today will help you get over into the area of supernatural victorious living. So uh, please pay careful attention today. This really today is an advanced class on the subject of faith. I want to take you into some deeper things. Praise God. Now let's begin today in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 33. It says, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises. Now, I want to focus today on the subject of, through faith, obtaining promises. These are things that maybe came to you through prophecy, and you knew it was God speaking to you through a prophetic uh, gift, an individual that could flow in prophecy, and you know that it confirmed something that God had already put in your heart. Or it could be a scripture that was so rhema, so alive, that it fed you with the divine promise, and that you knew God was speaking to you. So today I want to talk about, through faith, obtaining promises. By the way, of course, you can also, through faith, stop the mouths of lions. In other words, ultra dangerous situations, the covenant, when you work the law of faith, exempts you from calamities that others go through. And of course, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. And uh, all of these amazing things took place. But I want to talk about obtaining promises. This is a, a time where God is pouring out his spirit upon his people. And it is like the uh, uh, the British playwright said, it is the best of times, but also the worst of times. But for the church, it is the time of the glory of the Lord to be seen upon us. And that means the glory upon you with you making unprecedented, uh, unparalleled advancements in the assignment and purpose that God has for your life. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Now they obtain promises through faith. What is faith? Well, let me begin by saying that faith is not a religious theory, but rather it is a mystery of the kingdom. And we see this expressed by the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 9, where Paul says, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. So, Paul uses that expression, mystery of the faith. Okay? So, faith is not a religious theory. It's not some type of religious like thing that we talk about in seminary or something that's dry and boring, but rather it's a mystery of God's kingdom. Now, since that is true and Paul calls it that, then we have to ask ourselves, what is it about faith that actually makes it a mystery. Woo, praise God. And here, my friends, is the answer. Faith operates beyond the natural realm to bring forth its results. Okay, so let me uh, cover that again. Faith operates beyond the natural realm to bring forth its results, such as obtaining precious promises that God has told you that he will do for you. Praise God. So that's actually what makes it a mystery. So natural laws operate in the natural realm of humanity. They operate in the natural world in which we live. But faith operates outside of the natural realm and goes into the supernatural realm so that you can bring forth the results in the natural. So that's what the mystery is. It's the ability to reach into the supernatural and bring it into the natural. That, my friends, is the mystery of faith. Praise God. And we see a great example in my favorite gospel, which is the gospel of Mark. And this would be uh, verse 25. 
Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. Now, verse 30, and Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Or the disciples are like, hey, Lord, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching you. Everybody's like bumping into you and rubbing up against you. But he said, who touched me? In other words, somebody had touched him with faith and it caused power to come out of him. And somebody in that crowd just got a miracle and he knew it. And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole story. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Oh, glory to God. Your faith has made you well. In other, in other words, your faith has drawn power from another dimension, a spiritual dimension, into the natural world in which you live. Well, where did it come? I get, you know, you think, well, she got healed. Yes, but where did that healing, whatever it is, power, anointing, where did it come from? It came from the glory realm. It came from another realm, flowed through Jesus, flowed out of him and into that woman's body, and she was healed. So again, faith uh, draws power from another dimension and puts it into the dimension of the natural world in which you live. Oh, praise God. That, my friends, is why faith is a mystery. Why don't you just say that? Say, faith is a mystery. Oh, praise God. Mm, 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 mm. Faith is a mystery. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's go to Isaiah 53. You know, I was looking at this verse and chapter uh, yesterday and just could hardly get over it. It is such a tremendously powerful statement. This is Isaiah 53, and let's just go to verse 1. Verse 1, who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Now think of it again. Who has believed, okay, who has believed our report? Now, faith causes God's hand to move into your real life situation. You know that situation that you're wanting God to come into? Yes. Okay, so when you see here where it says, to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? The arm of the Lord is the power of God. The arm of the Lord is revealed to who? To the person who believes. So if you want the power of God to come on the scene, the arm of the Lord to come into your situation, you have to do what? You have to be the one that believes the report. Mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. So this is basically the difference between faith and what many uh, Christians only know as a religious belief system. You know, uh, within my ministry, uh, in my articles of incorporation, and also on our website with the statement of belief, you can see our core beliefs. But while those core beliefs are listed, uh, that, again, would not be what we would call faith that you can act on in the sense that that brings the power of God into your life. That is more of a belief system, and you need to have that. You need to have the basics of the faith down really good. But you could have a belief system in God, in His Word, and you could even have, and I'll read a few things from it, what is known in church history as the Apostles' Creed, but that Apostles' Creed will not get the job done for you when you need a miracle on the scene. Woo, praise God. Uh, here's the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the
the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. I'm reading very quickly. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead and so forth. And that is what would be known as the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles did not write that, but you had theologians that pulled from different statements that they made. They put it together, and they came up with uh, what is called the Apostles' Creed, or a core belief system. And I do have a core belief system, and our ministry has core beliefs that we stand on. But I'm not talking today about a uh, religious belief system. I'm talking th uh, the difference between faith and and a belief system. Praise God. Faith is not about a belief system. Faith is about tapping into power from the glory realm so that you can get your needs, uh, your needs met. Woo, praise God forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So faith is a spiritual weapon of unlimited force. I want you to see this in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, above all, they're all important, but above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. I'm telling you, you can quench every single one. Praise God. So the capacity to stop the work of the enemy against your life is available through the mighty shield of faith. Praise the Lord. And everything that the enemy would throw at you, that, uh, you know, you're not going to live your life out, or you're going to have an accident, or you're not going to recover from the sickness, or whatever it might be, all of that can be quenched, every single one, with the shield of faith. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at this in Daniel chapter 3, verses uh, 19 through 27. And uh, look at 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he spoke and commanded they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But look what happened in verse 27. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men after they had stood in that raging inferno, stood there and walking around in it completely unharmed with, of course, the fourth man. Then uh, they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected. Isn't that amazing? Not only were they not burned up, but their clothes were not burned up. And the smell of fire was not on them. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him. Praise God forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. So, their bodies, in a sense, even their clothes, it's like they were changed from a terrestrial earthly material to a celestial supernatural ability to take anything that the enemy threw at them. Glory to God. There is protection through the blood of Jesus. There is protection by walking in covenant with God. But you need to know your covenant rights because I don't want you to be a calamity. I don't want you to be a statistic. And you're not going to be because you know the word and the word is getting into your heart and it is making all the difference. And it says that those three men trusted in God. They trusted in him. So faith 
over every other type of belief system in the world is available through biblical faith, which is a supreme faith. Praise God. Mm -mm. Now, I want to get this home to you, that biblical faith resides in the heart, not in the head. I'm still working with some of you. If you've been watching me for a while, uh, but you still struggle with getting it into your heart and you have it in your head only, which is why it's still not working for you. But biblical faith resides in the heart, not in the head. And this is an area where many intellectuals are casualties in this area because they've got it in their head. Uh, maybe they even have all kinds of scriptures memorized and they have even a, a good working knowledge of scripture and stuff like that, but it's still not in their heart. So what I'm talking about is not about having the word in your head where you're a brilliant intellectualist, nothing wrong with being intellectual, but this will not produce for you. You have got to get it into your heart because man is a three in one creature. Praise God. You are essentially, primarily, a spirit. That is the core of who you are. You are a spirit, and you have a soul, and you live in your body, which is your house. Praise God. But your spirit, man, is the domain of where your dominion is centered. The, that domain is centered within your spirit, man. Praise God. So every time faith is rooted in the heart, it dominates the mind. Every time faith is rooted in your heart, it dominates your soul. We, and your soul can be very, very all over the board, okay? Because your soul is comprised of your mind, your will, your emotions. But that stabilizing anchor is the word in your heart. Praise God. By the way, every time faith is rooted in your heart, it dominates your emotions and feelings, and you become like cement, and you're not moved by circumstances. And as you and I know, circumstances can get pretty wild today, can't they? But when you are anchored in the word, and that word is in your heart, you're rock solid. And you can be like another testimony of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You've not only uh, aware of it up here, of God's protection, but Psalm 91 is in your heart. And though a thousand fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, it will not come near you. Well, Pastor Stephen, what about brother so-and-so? It came near him and he was a statistic. Well, you have to have it in your heart. It will not work if it's not in your heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so what happens is a lot of times uh, God's people, they're spiritually anemic and they've been feeding their intellect. And they've read all kinds of books, and they're very intellectual. And they've certainly been feeding their body, okay? But their spirit is anemic, and their spirit is starving. And then when a crisis hits, something comes in out of nowhere that's bigger than they are. Suddenly, they, they, they start to try to get into the Word to deal with it. And now, now you're rushing, and now you can't digest, and now you can't assimilate. Why? That all takes time. That all takes time. You cannot digest a meal in one minute. I don't care how fast your metabolism is. <laughs> it has to go through a process. But see, then people get into panic mode. But you need to be ahead of the curve, and you need to have storage where your battery is amped up, where your tank is full. Praise God. And I know that's what you're working on. I know that's why you're still listening right now. Mm -mm. This is the advanced faith class today. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -mm. By trusting God, your heart will begin to rule your mind. Let me say it again. By trusting God, your heart, okay, which is your spirit, will begin to rule your mind instead of the other way around. So I would say that you actually have a, a job to do. That's what this is revealing. You have a job to do so that if you want to obtain the promises that God has given to you, you can get busy and uh, develop your faith, and be powerful in your faith, and see those things come to pass. Praise the Lord. You know, um, you've heard the testimony from last Sunday how the Lord brought all of the provision in, the payoff, 
our 14.5 acre Field of Dream property. It all came in. But you know what? It was about 50 days ago that um, I turned my spiritual cannons towards that. And I said, we're going to hit this and we are going to destroy that debt. And for about 50 days, uh, over it was over 50 days, but I'll just say 50, right? You know, make, make it kind of even. For about 50 days, every morning I would get up and I would spend an hour, sometimes two hours, primarily meditating on scriptures that were feeding me. Feeding what, Pastor Stephen? Feeding by faith. And I, I spent a lot of time in the book of Joshua. I mean, it's like anytime I opened that book up, it was speaking to me. And as you know, that's, that's going up and taking the land. That's going up and conquering. And that's what I needed. And while I did have prayer time, it was mainly prayers that were based off of having meditated on scriptures and then just me conversing with God about that. Wow. And it got to the point where the enemy would suggest very strongly thoughts of, you're not going to get it. It's not going to happen for you. But I kept putting so much word in every day that I would wake up in the morning, lift up my hands and shout, I've got it. God's going to do it. We're going to see the land paid off. And it got to the point, now watch, watch this, watch, listen very carefully. It got to the point that about a month into it, I was so sure that God was going to do it. I would wake up and shout, God's going to do it. I call that land paid off. God is working. I'm going to see it happen. God's going to do it. That's when the devil tried to get me to compromise. What did he do, Pastor Stephen? This is what he did. The devil then began to shift and he would send these like little flaming darts and he would suggest, yes, you are going to get some of it, but you're not going to get all of it during the Feast of Tabernacles. So just prepare to move the date out further. And I said, no, no, I'm getting every single bit of that debt paid off on the Feast of Tabernacles. It shall happen. It shall happen. It shall happen. And I kept just ingesting the word, stuffing my spirit, not my head, but scriptures that were feeding my spirit. I kept stuffing it into my heart. And then um, something amazing took place. Praise God. Um, I so knew it. And what happened is just uh, right during the, uh, let me find the scripture here, right during the uh, uh, Feast of Tabernacles, the Lord gave my wife a word going into it. And he gave us, he actually spoke to Kelly. Uh, Pastor Kelly came to me and said, she said, Stephen, God just spoke to me this morning in my devotional time. I said, what did you, what did he tell you? Uh, she, uh, he gave me uh, Joshua 1, 11. Now, how many of you know I'm a 1, 11 person? That's a number that God has already spoken to me. 11, 11, uh, 1, 11. So God gave Kelly Joshua 1, 11. And this is what he said. And he made it personal. He spoke it personally. He, and he said, this is what's going to happen, uh, you know, with your ministry believing uh, for the debt to be paid off. Pass through the camp and command the people saying, prepare provisions for yourselves for with, now listen, for within three days, you will cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land, which the Lord, your God is giving you to possess. And God spoke to Kelly and said, within three days, you'll have all the money. Woo. And when she told me that, I said, I believe it. That is of God. I totally believe it. We are on that. We are on Joshua 1 11. God had already been ministering to me and feeding me out of Joshua chapter one, verse 11. And you know what? Within three days, we had it every single bit of it in the bank. Woo. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you have to have these things that are not just floating in your head and you're uncertain. No, you have got to get it into your heart. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory to God. So faith is of the heart and it rules the head, which does what? It establishes your triumph. Faith is of the heart it rules your head, and then it establishes your triumph. Praise God forever. Thank you, Jesus. 
Well, here's one that uh, is very potent. And of course, the Apostle Paul is the one who said this. 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4, verse 13. This is extremely powerful. And since we have the same spirit of faith, and I know that you and I do, we, we together have a spirit of faith, not a spirit of unbelief, doubting and complaining, a spirit of being overtaken. The gates of hell will never, ever prevail against the church. Mm, never, never, praise God. So we have that same spirit of faith, praise God, according to what is written. So what does the spirit of faith line up with? According to what is written, I believed and therefore did what? Spoke. We also, Paul says, believe and therefore do what? Complain? No, speak. Like, how do we speak? With the spirit of faith. Mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. Faith manifests its full, raw power. How? Through the tongue. When you talk and speak, praise God. So God has actually empowered your tongue, this little bitty thing, to have the ability to create the world in which you want to live. Praise the Lord. Now, we know that in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, there's a scripture that we need to look at. Death and life are where? In the power of the what? In the power of the toe? No, no. In the power of where? The power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Everything you say either counts for you or against you. Let me say it again. Everything you say, because angels are listening, we're working with spiritual dynamics that override even natural laws. Everything you say is either working for you or against you. Death and life are where? In the power of the tongue. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So go to work. Go to work and start speaking the right thing. Because what happens is that many Christians, they pray one way, and after they're done praying, and maybe they had a really good prayer time, even an anointed prayer time. But after they're, they're done praying, then they go out and say something in the completely opposite direction. So it's like they're praying for a breakthrough, but then they talk about, well, it looks like things are getting worse. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And then they maybe they pray for health, but then they go around and speak sickness. And they talk about how everybody's getting it and how, you know, we really can't stop it or control it. And so they undo their strong prayer life. But we see in Mark chapter 11 that Jesus spoke about this, verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Mm -mm. Oh Lord Jesus, we praise you. Speak life. Speak life. I know, I know things are uh, pretty wild out there, aren't they? Speak life. And what will happen is you'll even be moving ahead if things are even floating downstream. You will move higher in the glory, higher in the blessing, higher in favor, higher in health and healing, higher in prosperity. You must, though, speak life. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Now, let me say this also with faith and your power walk with God, that there is a level of depth in God that puts you above all, A-L-L, -L, all circumstances. You want to see a great example? It's happened all through church history. Would you like to see a biblical example? It's hard to find a better one than Acts chapter 14, verses 19 and 20. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. I wonder why they supposed that. Because he was. These stonings were brutal. Head-cracking, bone-shattering, brain-imploding explosions. Uh, 
They stoned him and dragged him out of the city, threw him out, supposing him to be dead. However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up. Now, notice, nobody prayed for him. Nobody laid hands on him. They're just standing there, and he rose up. What did he do? Did he run away fast as he could? No, he went into the city. Brothers and sisters, this element of the power of God operating in your life, there's a level of glory and power uh, that God wants you to come into, depths of knowing God, depths of walking with God, where yes, there is an element of invincibility to you. And you're not going anywhere until it is your time to go home. And until that time comes, you're here and you're on task. You are fulfilling your assignment and nothing is getting you off course. You are moving from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Receive. Receive the engrafted word of God into your spirit, into your heart. Mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. Dominion even over death if that is what is called for. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So my friends, if God said so, it's just simply your job to believe so. Again, if God said so, it's just your job to simply believe so. Mm -mm. Go to work and start saying it. Praise the Lord. Believe it. Say it. And what will happen? You'll see it. Believe it. Say it boldly. And you'll see it. Mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. Now, here's an interesting verse out of the book of Ecclesiastes. Let me jump over here to Ecclesiastes. We don't go there often, but it is a, an amazing book. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God who makes everything. Praise God. You'll never fully, in a sense, discover God. So what do you do? You, you just believe him. You know, if we could fully understand everything about God, he, he actually wouldn't be God. Sometimes I laugh when I hear, um, I don't laugh, but it does make me kind of giggle a little bit because when I hear, for example, like uh, maybe like an evangelical minister uh, talk about communion. And he says, well, this is just grape juice and bread. These are only symbols of, of, of Jesus' body and blood. That's all they are. They're just token elements. Don't really mean anything. We're just doing this out of our tradition. What is he doing? Well, I would say that just as faith is a mystery, which takes the supernatural, the divine, and pulls it into the natural. I'm telling you also, communion is also another kingdom mystery. And it's got a supernatural element to it where you can take the supernatural healing power, protective power of the blood and the, and the body and bring it into your life. But these are all kingdom mysteries. And when they are appropriated correctly, through knowledge of the Word of God, then they work for you. But if it's just something in your head and you think, oh, that's just, that's all that is. Just, that's just a um, concept of faith. That's just theories of faith. Oh, that's just grape juice and a cracker. That's all that is. Then what it is is stuff that's floating in your head and it still has not permeated into your heart. Praise God. But we're getting it in there and I'm stuffing you full of the Word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So what we need to do is inject our faith into the prophetic word. Look at this in Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. Let's go to verse 25. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. Well, it looked like they were all going to die out there on the Mediterranean Sea on an endless roller coaster ride. That's no fun, especially when it goes on for two weeks nonstop. But an angel of the Lord spoke to Paul, and when Paul got that word, uh, he injected his faith into what came straight from the throne of God. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God 
than it will be just as it was told me. Just as it was told me. When God speaks, faith comes alive. When my wife came out of that devotional, her early morning prayer time with God, and said, Stephen, God just spoke to me. Uh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 11, within three days we'll have all the money. Uh, we, we, had, we actually had it all by the closing night of two days. And on the third day, more just kept coming in. Praise the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. And glory to God and some more still kept coming in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Paul said, I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. So when God says something to you, you put all of your belief, all of your faith into that. And then what will happen? You'll see the, the delivery of it. You will see it delivered fully into your life. I'm telling you, the Word of God is powerful. We're not talking about uh, uh, empty intellectual conversations about uh, the subject of faith in a way that doesn't even benefit us. No, we're talking about the raw power of faith expressed through taking a hold of God's Word and uh, utilizing that to bring from the spirit realm into the natural realm what it is that we need. Mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. So inject your faith into God's word spoken to you, and you'll see promises fulfilled, and you'll see prophecies come to pass. Watch, even before this year is out. Watch. Mm -mm. Glory, glory to God. Now, let me share a few things with you that will help you along this line. And I want us to go over to the classic uh, chapter of Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, and look at, again at verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You need to expect, expect to see promises fulfilled, prophecies come to pass. You need to expect it to happen in this season of miracles that we are in right now. Praise God. So faith is the substance of things expected. That's what hope is. It is a divine expectation. So we could read it just like that. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things expected. And God wants you to have, I would call it a super expectancy that what he has told you now is the time for delivery. You know, when the timing is right, there's no strain. There's no struggle. There's no drinking three bottles of Pepto-Bismol. There's no chewing your fingernails. There's no uh, perspiration and heart palpitations. No! There's peace. There's joy. And there's the glory of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I also want to say today that you need to feel your heart along with expectancy, you need to fill your heart with thoughts of the fulfillment of that promise. Fill your heart with, the, with, the, um, with thoughts of its fulfillment. Get up in the morning, lift up your hands, and jump out of bed, even if, even if there's symptoms of pain. Lift up your hands, jump out of bed, and say, the miracle is mine. God's healing power is flowing through my body. I received my miracle. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Mm. before you go to sleep at night, pack some more of the word in there. Read a little bit, maybe 10, 15 minutes and, uh, and read what's feeding you. That's so important. Well, I do enjoy reading through the Bible because in a sense, it's all good. You know, when you read, um, the gospels, the words of Jesus turn red, but that's done by some guy at the printing place. It's all God's Word, Genesis 1 through Revelation 22. It's all the Word of God, mm -mm. not just the red part. It's all God's Word. So whatever is speaking to you, feed on that. And by the way, scriptures that are alive and they feed you, you'll never struggle having to memorize them. They get lodged not only in your head, but they get lodged in your heart. And when they're in your spirit, 
uh, they're alive to you, and you can, you can bring them up without any struggle. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So fill your heart with thoughts of the fulfillment of God's promises for your life. Because we see in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So is he. So we want to refuse, uh, refuse to allow our minds to worry, to be fearful, to be paralyzed by things going on in the earth. And we want our spirits to be full under the authority of the dominion of a spirit of a heart filled full of faith. Praise God. Praise God. You know, you can't pour into others if you yourself are like a victim. God wants you to be a victor so you can pour into others. There are many, many who do not know these things that we're talking about today. So in a sense, we are spiritual medics. Are we walking in victory? Yes. But out of the overflow of that, we are able to minister love and to comp- and compassion to others who in many ways may not ever really understand it. Even other believers that are saved and born again and have a covenant of salvation. They have a covenant of salvation. They're ready for heaven. They're going to go to heaven because they're saved and they have asked Jesus into their heart, but they have no understanding of the covenant of protection. They have no understanding of the covenant of financial increase, but they are saved. But yet because of that limited knowledge, uh, they may take some hard hits. So we need to walk in love and pour out the mercy and love for God And knowing also that with many believers, you have to go step by step. You have to give them the milk first and then later the meat. Now, this is an advanced meat class. Okay. So I can feed you with that. Many of you, this is like, this is like your normal food. Praise the Lord. I had one of the best filet mignons when I was in England. (laughs) I'm almost like looking for a holy excuse to go back to England just so I can have another one of those filet mignons because that restaurant, they're only in England. Uh, But wow, what incredible steak. And when you've had good meat, praise God, you, you get acclimated and accustomed to that. Praise the Lord. So my friends, keep your heart full. Yes, we want to have very vibrant prayer life. But I I would also suggest to you that if you're in need for something and there's something you sense like it's manifestation time, you need to give extra attention to meditation. Now you're still going to pray, but a lot of times your prayer life and your talking with God uh, begins to uh, it begins to uh, divert to what is coming out of your meditation. And you'll still see your prayer life is very rich but you're getting that food that you so need, that meat that you so need in this hour. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory, glory. Leaders who don't know the Lord can even uh, suffer these things. That's why as a believer, trust me, the only safe spot on the planet is in Jesus. That is the only safe spot to be in Jesus to be saved and born again, and to walk in his covenant. Mm -mm. Walk real close to him. Feed on his word. Amen. Put your head on his chest so you know his heartbeat. Amen. That is the only safe spot. And in that place, it doesn't matter what's going on, you will be in a place of refuge, of safety, and protection. God promises it. God actually promises it. But you have to believe it. You have to not just hear it. You actually have to believe it. Who has believed our report? Well, I don't know if God could really protect us, Pastor Stephen, if this happened. Who has believed our report? To him, the arm of the Lord is what? Revealed. But you have to believe it. And when you believe it, it works. Just that simple. Father, I pray for your people that are watching today that they just run with your word from victory to victory, just like Joshua conquering and conquering and conquering, even the midst when others could be having very difficult times. Father, we thank you that you knew we would be born in this era in which we live, uh, in the midnight hour approaching moment. You knew that you would reveal to us what we need in order to make it. And so we have been selected 
not only to stand in this hour, but to stand as a prophetic company of believers overcoming anything and everything that the world would present. And we thank you for victory and for pulling others into it and for so empowering us that we have the ability to reach out and rescue those who need our help. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you're watching this right now and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, come on right now. I want you to pray with me and make your peace with God. Before we do that, let me get a drink of hot tea. And if you used to be a believer, but you got hoodwinked by the devil and went off into the darkness, come back now. The blood of Jesus is more than enough to wash your sins away, and you can come back right now and get right with God. Okay, let us pray together. Say this. Say, Lord Jesus, I fully, completely surrender my life to you. Wash me with your precious blood. Save me now. Jesus, write my name in your book of life. I completely give my heart to you. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Step into my life. Lead me and guide me from this day forward. In your name I pray. Amen. And amen. Glory. Glory. Glory to God. Now begin to feed on the Word of God. Begin to feed on the Word of God. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that you're in the family of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory. Glory. Glory to God. I feel so privileged as a minister that many of the messages that we share actually make it into China to the underground church. Are you ready for this? Actually make it into Iran, which is the fastest growing uh, segment of the body of Christ in the earth today, even with all of the persecution. Oh, praise God. God is moving and uh, God is working. So God's going to make you real smart. God's going to make you invincible. God's going to make you strong and you'll have your own testimonies. Maybe not of being thrown like Daniel into a lion's den and getting delivered. Maybe not thrown into a fiery furnace like the Hebrews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But whatever happens, you'll go right through it. The fire will not burn you. The water will not drown you. You will go through it and you will stand as an overcomer, as a testifier of God's goodness and power. Hallelujah. Now, Let's take Holy Communion, which is more than just a token or symbolic experience. This is real. We're going to pray over this. Grab, grab some unleavened bread. Grab a cracker. Grab some grape juice. If you don't have grape juice, grab what you've got. Get some apple juice or even Dr. Pepper. Okay, just get what you've got. And we're going to pray. This will be blessed, and we will receive under the form of under the mysterious form of bread and juice, we will receive the body and the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Father, we now bless this bread and juice. Through this prayer, we set it apart as being holy. And we thank you that this is now the flesh and blood of Jesus. Father, we would be the first to admit that we don't fully understand kingdom mysteries the mystery of faith, the mystery of communion. And in some ways we never will because they are mysteries that come out of your heart. And that's okay. But we do know that our part is simply to believe and we're going to major on that. Father, we now thank you that this is the flesh and blood of Jesus. As we receive the Lord's body, we thank you for the living word. Father, you said that you would feed us with the finest of the wheat and we pray that you feed us with living words, the living manna, scriptures that are so vibrant and alive that we are always on top, infused with faith. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let revelatory words be our nourishment, and let us be in the overflow to converse with others, talking with others in the faith about these things as well. Now, Father, we thank you. Now, we now receive the Lord's flesh. We thank you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Let's partake together. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for protection, no matter where we're at. Even if bullets were flying, we thank you for protection, that we will live our, our lives to the full and accomplish everything that you've called us to do. We thank you that greater is he that's in us than he that is in the world. We thank you, Father God, for leading us and guiding us by your Spirit into green pastures, a safe journey, a prosperous journey. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We receive it now. Thank you, O oh God. Let's receive together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My friends, we are seeing things of war. We are hearing of things that are barbaric. Uh, we are aware of these things. And, you know, uh, we're, we're a generation. We did not know World War II. We did not know World War I and things like that. But we have things going on today. But what you have to do, though, is you have to, even with the, the agony and the pain that is out there, you have to stay up. You have got to keep your faith up, keep your faith strong, because they need you. People need you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you walk in that covenant of supernatural protection and blessing. At this time, let me put up on the screen the giving links, ways in which you can give and support this ministry so that we can continue to send the message of faith in God of victorious living around the world. The people who need it, who desperately need it. Praise God. Praise the Lord that even if a person were called by God to be a martyr, they can face it with faith and courage and then receive that special martyr's crown. But many of you and 99.9% .9 of most of you, you're called to live the martyred lifestyle, the crucified lifestyle. You will never be called by the Lord to lay your life down physically, but you will be called to lay it down so that you might serve him in the capacity that he has called you to. Praise God. Glory. So I want to say thank you for your giving. Thank you for your support of this ministry. You can give online. You can give uh, by mailing and giving. We even have text by mail. You can text it right in. Praise the Lord. But whatever works best for you. And I thank you for your support of this ministry as we now have satellite coverage reaching over 3 billion people. Praise the Lord. And those are accurate statistics that are garnered and gathered by a specialist in their fields through our satellite networks, God TV, uh, Golden Eagle Broadcasting, Golden Eagle, not only on direct TV, but also over all of Asia and that entire part of the world. We're reaching over 3 billion uh, potential viewers and, um, it is amazing what God is doing. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you for standing with us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, bless your people as they sow and give. I thank you, Father God, they are continuing, even before this year is up, to push for more breakthroughs, and you've got it. You're going to do it for them, and they're going to rejoice. Now, I thank you, Father God. Take them to higher levels, even in their finances. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Father, for courage, for courage in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you for joining me today. Keep your prayers going for the nation of Israel. God's hand is upon them in a special way. Keep your prayers going for them. And God's blessings be upon your life. Thank you for watching. I'll see you back again real soon.